We usually use an oscilloscope for visualizing a voltage over time, but sometimes it's also useful to visualize the current waveform over time. The right way to do it is to get a current probe which can sense the current and convert that to a voltage that the oscilloscope can display. However, such devices are pretty expensive, they can be around $1000 even for an entry level one like the Rigol RP1001C, which is only rated up to 300 kHz bandwidth. But we can improvise something for much lower cost and it should allow us to visualize the current waveform on the oscilloscope. You've probably seen me use a shunt resistor like this when testing power supplies to take a look at the current waveform. because. As you know, and I'll bring in a schematic for this, uh, when passing a current through a uh, resistor uh, will generate a voltage drop. That voltage drop is directly proportional with the passing current. And with a round value resistor, we can have an easy to use transformation ratio between voltage and current. All we have to do is introduce this uh, resistor in line with our power supply and the device under test. For example, if this is a 1 ohm resistor, we have a 1 to 1 ratio. For each milliamp passed through this resistor, we'll have 1 millivolt of voltage drop that our oscilloscope can measure and display. Such a circuit will of course have its limitations, for example, uh, it won't work very well when testing low voltage, low power devices because our resistor will introduce a burden voltage which will drop our supply voltage to the device under test. This is also not an isolated measurement, so it might not be safe to use this method when connecting with higher voltage circuits. There are still a lot of scenarios where you could use this successfully on the electronics workbench, so it might be worth building something a bit nicer. I want to make this nicer by building it inside an enclosure uh, with uh, the required BNC connector for connecting to the oscilloscope and 4mm banana plugs for passing the current through. So I picked this uh, small aluminum enclosure which would be good enough to house the resistors um, because there are several advantages to using multiple resistors in parallel. First, we can increase our power dissipation capability by using multiple resistors in parallel. Second, it might be easier to find 10 ohm resistors than it is to find 1 ohm ones. And third, by using 10 10 ohm resistors in parallel, we get closer to the absolute 1 ohm value than what we would get by using a single 1 ohm resistor with the same 1% tolerance. And so we would get more accurate results in our measurements. For our circuit, I've designed a small PCB that would fit inside the enclosure and it would hold the 10 resistors connected in parallel. This was uh, designed in a uh, KiCad and if you'd like to grab these files and order your own PCBs or do some changes, there will be a link in the description below the video. And uh, here is how the PCB looks like up close. Uh, it has been manufactured by GLC PCB. I went for this uh, matte black solder mask with the uh, Enig gold coating on the pads, which is always my preferred look for PCBs. They just look super nice in this uh, combination. I also got a uh, steel stencil which would help with the assembly. You don't really need one for such a small circuit but uh, it is inexpensive and the end result is much nicer when using a stencil. If you want to order your own PCBs there will be a link to GLC PCB in the description. For the assembly I applied the solder paste using the stencil I got. I placed my parts manually using some tweezers, then I reflowed using the hot plate which if you haven't seen before I reviewed in Vollog 210 uh, which I will link on screen right now, it works great for small jobs like this. And this is how the boards look after reflow, they turned out pretty nice, all of the resistors have self-aligned to their pads and there isn't too much flux residue either, I'm pretty happy with the results. I've also drilled the required holes into the enclosure to fit the BNC connector and the 4mm connectors so I can now assemble everything together with some of these uh, short silicon wires and this is a very handy box of uh, silicon hookup wire I'll put a link to this in the description it's pretty nice and inexpensive it's uh, that flexible stuff well worth keeping on the workbench there are a few things to mention and keep in mind if you're building this yourself first of all the uh, BNC connector will have its uh, shield 
or the uh, negative connected to the uh, aluminum enclosure and this works fine for me because I, I intend to use this for low side sensing introducing this shunt on the negative line going to the device under test however I will need to be careful not to short something to the aluminum case and uh, this has implications uh, particularly involving the oscilloscope BNC connectors for which this shield is mains are connected. So the moment you connect a wire between this BNC connector and the one on your uh, oscilloscope input you have basically connected uh, this circuit to mains earth. So there are potentially negative implications depending on what you connect to this box. So it's just something to keep in mind. For example, if I'm connecting this box to the negative of my uh, power supply, then that uh, negative rail on the power supply will become mains earth referenced. The enclosure can be isolated by using an isolated BNC connector. Uh, but I didn't have any of those on hand and you would still have the oscilloscope shield or the earth connected to the uh, negative input uh, of the box no matter what you do it's just uh, something you need to be careful of. The next thing to mention is that I've named my input terminals F as F- and F+, plus, where F stands for force terminal, but in reality these are not positive and negative, as I will be using this to sense on the low side, F- minus is the input which I will connect to a power supply negative, and F+, plus is the output which I uh, will connect to the device under test negative input. I will have to mark this stuff on the enclosure in case I forget the information uh, many months later. Everything went together pretty nicely, the enclosure is now closed. I've added these small labels to mark the input and output, as well as the uh, actual measured value of the resistor inside. We got pretty close to 1 ohm, as indicated by my HP 34401 in 4-wire measurement mode, the value was 1.004 ohms. And I'm pretty happy with that because I won't be using this to do accurate current measurements. The goal here is to just visualize the waveform so we can just consider this to be a one-to-one -one ratio even if it isn't down to the last decimal. It doesn't really matter if the measure value is just a few milliamps off. Now given our 1 ohm resistor value, each milliamp will be represented by 1 millivolt on the oscilloscope. So this box is best suited for measuring tens of milliamps up to 1.5 amps maximum. And the upper limit is given by the power dissipation capability of our resistor pack, which is 2.5 watts total. That's because I used 10 of uh, quarter watt rated resistors, but this may vary depending on the power rating of the resistors you use. And now let me show you how uh, I can use the scope shunt to check how the waveform of my KP184 electronic load looks like. By the way, if you haven't seen the review of this electronic load, I will link it on screen right now. So wiring goes like this, positive from my bench power supply goes directly to the positive of the electronic load. Negative from the bench supply goes to the input of the scope shunt, output of the scope shunt goes to the negative of the load, so the scope shunt is in line with the negative rail. The oscilloscope connects to the Sense BNC terminal via a standard RG58 coaxial cable. If you have a modern scope, you might even have the option of configuring the vertical axis to show amps instead of volts. It's just a label, after all, I have that option on my DS1054Z and uh, there you have it. Now it's showing amps on the waveform. If I turn the electronic load on, it's right now pulling 400 milliamps and the scope is showing that RMS value of uh, around 400 milliamps. There is a bit of uh, common mode noise which is being picked up, maybe there are some uh, lights which are spewing uh, some RF noise around my workbench, but we can also see a uh, small oscillation on the electronic load circuit, because if I turn the electronic load off, that oscillation almost uh, goes away. And this kind of measurements where you can actually view the current waveform can be really useful when debugging or testing uh, circuits or even other test equipment like in this case.
The design can be adjusted if you'd like to measure a different range of currents, you'll have to calculate and fit different value resistors in there. You can certainly put a higher value resistor to look at smaller currents, but that would increase the burden voltage which is the voltage drop on this resistor box. Or you can put in a smaller value resistor in a bigger package to look at higher currents and be able to dissipate a higher power. One thing is uh, certain if you're using values like 1, 10, 100, 1000, uh, those will be easy to calculate and uh, reference back to milliamps values. I hope you enjoyed this quick project. It's something that anyone can build themselves and it can be useful if you plan to look at the current waveform using your oscilloscope. Let me know what you think about this method of measuring current in the comments below and don't forget you can support this channel on Patreon for as little as $1 per month. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next week with a new video.